the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Verse number 37, he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. He came into the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeing the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. When he was coming, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado? And we, the damsel was not dead, but sleeping. They laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he taken the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, entered into where the damsel was lying. He took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. They were astonished with great astonishment, verse 43 and last. He charged them straightly that no man should know, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. And I want to preach today from the subject, next level faith. Next level faith. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for standing. Thank you for honoring the reading of his word. Next level faith. As we examine the life and ministry of Jesus, it is apparent that he cared for people and he was actively involved in fixing what was wrong in their lives. He is a compassionate Savior. Do I have a witness today? I'll say that he is a compassionate Savior. This is essentially seen in the Gospels, especially the Gospel of Mark, that's called the Action Gospel. Because in this Gospel, we find Jesus is moving, healing, restoring, and fixing the lives of those that have problems in their lives. Always remember that Jesus was a mirror reflection of the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So everything that Jesus did in his life is a reflection of what the Father does and what the Father desires to do. Today, the story catches Jesus in the midst of a hectic two days of miracles and ministry. He had just fed the 5,000 or 20,000. He calmed the ferocious storm. He just cast out legions of demons from one man. He supernaturally healed the woman with an issue of blood without even touching her. This was a powerful display of his power and sovereignty. And now he is confronted by the ruler of the synagogue named Jairus. He begs Jesus to come and heal his daughter who was at the point of death. Jesus agrees to go with him and starts his journey to his house with the express intention to heal his daughter. And here's a side note. Jairus' daughter was 12 years old. The woman with the issue of blood had suffered 12 years. So the moment of this girl's birth was the moment of this woman's issues, rather. And what is so interesting is that, and I'll use this analogy if you can, um, Jesus is on his way to this 12-year-old girl who represents the next generation. He's on his way to touch the next generation. But he's hindered by a woman who is a picture of the church with bleeding issues. And so while he stops to take care of this woman with the bleeding issue, the girl dies. It may not be said about our churches that while Jesus is on his way to touch the next generation, that we are caught up in bleeding issues. And we distract him from his mission to save the next generation. Would God have mercy on us that we walk and live in the kind of preparation that we will hinder the power of God? Hey, I don't know what you would bring with God. When I need God, I need him to come without delay. I don't want anyone to be standing in the way of me walking into my miracle. In fact, I would say to you today, as I've said in the last time I was here, I'm standing today as a testimony of the power of prayer. Because while I was ill in my body, you heard me testify. The Lord touched me supernaturally and rescued me and restored me and gave me more years. So I got a reason. I'm going to say hi. A church up here. I got a reason to praise God. I got a reason to shout and celebrate. I got a reason to declare that God is good and his mercy in your I'm going to say hi. I'm a 50 of you today. I'm going to lift your hand and say, God is good. And his mercy is enduring forever. I'm not ashamed to give him praise. I'm not ashamed to bless his name. I'm not ashamed to celebrate him. I'm not ashamed to get excited about my God. Because I know my God is able. You are 
this. The first thing that I want to talk about is the making of next level faith. Brother Dwayne, how do we get that next level faith? How, how do we posture ourselves, Sister Morrison, to develop next level faith? I want, to, I want you to know that God is constantly allowing our lives to be bombarded with situations that test and stretch our faith. I'm going to say it again. Your life is constantly surrounded by things that build your faith. And, and, and in fact, may, may, I, may, I, may, I, may I help someone today that sometimes God pulls back his hand from helping us so that we can face a situation for which we need faith to be delivered from. And so it is while we develop that faith to be delivered that we get to know God in a better way. See, I never know him as a healer until I got sick. I never knew him as a way maker until I needed him to make a way for me. So sometimes God will stand back and allow a situation to shut you in just so you can get a chance at a funeral home. So you can get a chance to get to know him. Get back. Because watch this. 
If Lazarus was only sick, medicine to help him. So any medical practitioner could have gotten the glory out of Lazarus' situation. Hmm? You're right. But when God, when Jesus delayed it and allowed it to get so critical that he died, and not just died, but stayed four days in the grave, even medicine can fix that. There is no pharmacy that can give you anything for a dead, four day, four day dead corpse. I'm going to put that thing in the ground quickly. But that's a God case. And I came to tell about 50 of you that you are facing today a God case. When you come, oh God, I wish I had somebody whose faith was alive. When you come out of what you are in, everybody will know that your God is real. Everybody will know that your God is a deliverer. Everybody will know your God. When you come out of this, you have to even testify. Your life is going to be your testimony. I feel a shout of Be careful, my brothers and sisters. I want you to be careful. 
careful of the counsel you receive from the people around you. Because the people around him said to him, you no longer need to trouble the master. In other words, they said to him, it's finished. It's a wrap. That, that, that's how your daughter is dead. There is no further reason to trouble the master. You've got to be careful with the counsel you receive from the people around you. I want to say to you, you better make sure somebody in your circle has the ability to say, but we still believe God. Oh, come on, that's a good place to shout. Oh, y'all, I'm telling the truth. Everybody that's unqualified to have a 
not go because Jesus had how many disciples? Twelve. That's not a true question. He had how much? Twelve. Right, 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 right. right. Twelve. But the Bible says he only carried Peter, James, and John. It means a what? It means nine of the twelve. So, 
there is somebody who has a sixth sense. The ways of God are past finding out. So in this, in this test, Jesus arrives at the house and he's immediately surrounded and greeted by what, 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 what they call in those days paid mourners. Yeah. You know, paid mourners were, the Jewish people were very extra. Very extra. They were exaggerated. So when somebody dies, they, they made a big thing about it. And there are people that don't even know you that join the morning parade. And by the time you get to the house, you meet everybody waiting. And you touch the place that you know who, who, who died. I don't know, but <laughs> I just you're crying. Pay mourners. So he gets to the house, and, and I'm going to prove to you that all of them were paid mourners because they were good actors. Pretenders. How do I know? Because the shallow, superficial nature of their grieving. Okay, okay, walk with me in your Bible. In verse 38, verse 38, come on. Verse 38, it says they wept. Look at the last part of verse 38. Everybody please. They wept and they wailed. These people were born. Sunday, some of you are one phone call away 
to the miracle breaking that you've been believing for the last seven years for. I don't know who I just prophesied to, but, but I felt something leap on my spirit. So if that be somebody here, if I go, I, I don't know what I'm preaching to, but I can't tell you I am right at the verge of a breakthrough. In fact, you are at the verge of a defining moment in your life where after this, they will know that you are of God. Even those who doubt it. Even those who doubt your walk. I mean, we close with the miraculous results. Next, that was faith. I want to declare this word to you faith works. Did you get a pair of words? Faith works. No matter what you're dealing with today, your faith in God has the ability to prepare you to face it, to fight it. And ultimately you fix it. Amen. 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 There is no situation that faith in God cannot resolve. Come on, I want I want to have a witness in the house today. There have faith in God. There is no situation you can ever encounter that faith in God. I'm telling you what I know for myself. Tell you what I know for myself. And 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 um, I shared half of my testimony the last time I was here. It's a bit too What many people do understand, um, Samara's on the staff, that she walked with me, that in one year, in fact, not even just one year, in a space of a month and a half, but between a month and a half, I had to fight off two levels of cancer in my life. Both colon cancer and stomach cancer in the same season. Well. I had to fight off vigorously. I went, I went, I, I lost 30 pounds in less than five weeks. Because I had two levels of dying in me. Beyond my ability to fix. Medication was only just covering it. I need a God who can raise up the dead. I need a God who was not afraid to say, stand up and be bold and declare to my people that I heal your body. And so I have a testimony today that when I didn't see it well, I couldn't see myself past the next week.
Jesus does two things. The first thing he does is he takes the girl by the hand. Why? The answer is because faith always gets a grip first. Look at your neighbors and get a grip. See, faith can't be so fragile and you gotta hold on and believe. Look at your neighbors and get a grip. See, the reason why the Bible says that anyone who comes to God must believe that he is and he is a reward.
she went back to living her life as though she had never died. If you are here today in 
desire, only for watching this. And you have never surrendered your life to Christ. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you are present in the house today, I want you to identify yourself by lifting your hands up. We're going to pray for you. We're going to come to the altar in a minute. But if you're not saved, please lift your hands up. Preacher, pray for me. I want to be saved. I, I want to get to know this Jesus you talked about. I, I want to know him personally. I want to find life. I, I need him to work his work of salvation in my heart. If you don't have to believe in emotion, you don't have to feel emotion. 